Hey, welcome to today's video. I'm Prof Omar, and today we're going to solve a problem from a GRE math subject test practice book that's a multivariable calculus problem without using any multivariable calculus. We're going to use single variable calculus in a clever way to figure out the solution to this problem. Say what? All right, so the problem in question is find the unique local minimum of the function f of xy equal to x cubed minus 3xy plus y cubed. To start, what I want to do is analyze the graph of this function z equal to f of xy. So this is a graph in 3D space. We have our axes x, y, and z. And I want to make an observation about this. If you look at this function, and interchange the roles of the variables x and y, you'll notice that the function stays the same. That means that this function, when graphed, has symmetry about the plane x equals y. Okay, so how does that affect the question involved? Well, let's say we had a point where on the graph, we have a local minimum. So let's say that point is a, b, and then its last coordinate would have to be f of a, b. So what's going on geometrically in this picture is that at this point we have something like this to establish that that point is a local minimum. Well then, if that's the case, by symmetry about the plane x equals y, the picture over here at the point b, a, f of b a is going to be the same because locally what's happening at x y is the same as what's happening locally at y x by the symmetry of this function. So if you have a local minimum here, then we have a local minimum over here as well. Okay, but what does that tell us? That tells us if you have a unique local minimum, there's no way that these values a and b are different. Because if they were, then we'd have at least two local minima. So a local minimum has to occur at a point where the first two coordinates are the same. That means that this point a, it would have to be a, f of a, a, would lie somewhere on this plane x equals y. So if we're looking for this unique local minimum, it's going to be at a point where our curve z equals f of xy intersects the plane x equals y, and that's going to be a one-dimensional thing. And our points here in general will look like a, a, f of a, a. So we can now reduce this problem to a one-variable calculus problem by thinking about it in the following way. If we had a local minimum for this entire graph z equals f x y, then in the piece of the graph that intersects with the plane x equals y, that point that we're considering will have to be a local minimum of that smaller graph as well, because that graph is a piece of the larger graph. So we can restrict to this one dimensional curve and look for local minima there to figure out local minima of this larger function. To do that, we'll assign a function g for f when the two arguments x and y are the same and look at local minima for that particular function. So let's go ahead and do that here and this reduces everything to single variable calculus. So we create a function g of x, that's f of x, x, and f is described as follows, so f of x, x is 3 or 2x cubed minus 3x squared. All right, so let's do single variable calculus to figure out local minima for this function g. g prime of x is 6x squared minus 6x, which factors into 6 times x times x minus 1. So our critical values happen at x equals 0 and x equals 1. Now taking a second derivative, we can classify what these critical points are. The second derivative here is 12x minus 6. G double prime at 0 is negative 6, that's negative, and G double prime at 1 is 6, which is positive. 
So here is where we get our local minimum. And so the only local min for the function g is at x equals 1. Which means, if we go back to our picture over here, that the only possible local min of this particular function happens when a is 1. And that's at the point 1, 1. And our value for f at that point will be uh, negative 1. So the unique local minimum of this function has value negative 1 and it occurs at the point 1, 1. And we're able to establish this completely without using multivariable calculus. The insight on the symmetry allowed us to reduce this problem from a multivariable problem to one in one variable. And this type of technique can be useful on various problems with symmetry involving multivariable calculus on the GRE math subject test. So I hope you liked today's video. If you'd like to see more videos like this, definitely subscribe to the channel and click the bell for notifications. And if you like this video, click a thumbs up.